In this video, you will learn how to test so many gamepads using the Joy-T program. After launching, you will see an interface with a graph of your controller's sticks to start receiving data. You need to perform a calibration to do this. You should start rotating each joystick clockwise. This will collect data on polling rate and circle error. After releasing the sticks, the program automatically gets data on drift. But our task is to get the worst position of the stick in a stationary position. That's why I manually try to find the largest displacement point. This will allow the program to register it when the stick is not moving. This way, we get the worst possible drift for each stick. Now it's time to measure the asymmetry index for each joystick. joystick. Special brackets which can be 3D printed or ordered from the link in the description will help us with this. For this test, the 1.2 millimeters bracket is typically used. It should be put on the stick in the program. We select a special mode. Trail. Constant which allows recording all stick movements. Without removing the bracket, start rotating the stick in a circle. It is important to also rotate the bracket itself as you see in the video. After that, the bracket should be removed and moved to the other stick. Next, repeat the procedure if the first rotation was unsuccessful. Don't worry, you can do a second one. This will make the measurement more accurate. As you can see, I wasn't very careful when removing the bracket and I went a little outside the lines of my circle. To remove errors, just hover the cursor over the unwanted area and erase a tool will appear, allowing us to erase unwanted lines. Ideally, you should be left with a clear circle or a rhombus of square if your joystick is of poor quality. At this stage, the main test data is collected and we can send the results to GamePallet.com. Press export and select upload to add. Your personal page with the test results will open. Below it there is a form that needs to be filled out. Specify your gamepad model by selecting it from the list or add a new one. Specify the firmware version and select the connection type. Next, you need to specify the size of the inner dead zone. There is a separate video with the link on how to determine it. But let me show you what the absence of a dead zone looks like. If the joystick reacts to the slightest touch, it means it has no dead zone. And as a rule, this is a good sign, as high quality gamepads do not have an inner dead zone. That's why I select none in the form on the page. There is also a separate video for calculating the outer dead zone. However, today I will show you how to calculate it with millimeter accuracy. Let's start with what an outer dead zone is. An outer dead zone is when the gamepad stick is post travel that is effectively play in which there is no useful movement. Our sample has a very small outer dead zone and that's good. To accurately calculate the outer dead zone, let's take the smallest bracket. Here I'll pull four millimeters, we'll put it on the right stick. With the bracket on the joystick, we deflect it to the extreme position. If the stick does not reach 100% deflection, that's a good result. However, to the left side, as you can see, the stick still reached 100%. That's why I'll take a larger bracket to always six millimeters and repeat this test. By the way, I do this test exclusively on the right stick as the right stick is the most important for FPS gaming. After putting on the ear poor six millimeters bracket, we can see that the gamepad does not reach the extreme position in either direction. This means that the size of our outer dead zone is in the range of Zimmer 4 to Eripoi 6 millimeters. So I'll write something in between 0.5 millimeters. Next, you need to indicate whether the gamepad stick has movement skipping in the center. If when moving the stick from the center, you see that it moves smoothly without jumping anywhere. This means only one thing, it has no skipping. And that's very good. That's why in this case we select no. Next, we select the last parameter from the list, which is called axis magnet. This is another ailment of budget game pads that have axis snapping. Checking for such snapping is very simple. Just move the stick as I do in this video. If the pointer moves smoothly during movement without stopping on the central axis, this means there is no magnet. And therefore, in the drop down list, we select no. In case you did the test with some custom sticks or non standard settings, you can add a note about it. However, if you did everything with standard settings, you don't need to do this. Next, you have a choice. Either save this test page for yourself or send it for moderation. In the second case, the test has a chance to be published on the gamepad's page.